Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Wagoner. Welcome to today's Tuesday Tip. Those of us who treat large populations of high carrier risk children know the frustration of having a child that's treated under general anesthesia at a young age return a couple of years later for a second trip to the OR. Often, the second time around, the caries were on teeth that were either barely erupted or had only minor occlusal caries at the time of the first OR visit. The question of how aggressive we should be in our treatment plan of these GA cases is examined in an article published in the September-October 2021 issue of Pediatric Dentistry. Entitled, Primary Second Molar Treatment as a Predictor of Repeat General Anesthesia, and authored by Azadani and Casamassimo and others, this article found that restorative treatment other than stainless steel crowns on second primary molars at a first general anesthesia appointment significantly increased the odds of the need for a second general anesthesia appointment. In other words, putting stainless steel crowns on primary second molars significantly decreased the odds of a second OR visit. This was a retrospective study of dental records of children who received dental treatment under general anesthesia between the ages of 24 to 48 months of age. Statistical tests were used to test the association between the treatment of the primary second molars at the first appointment and the odds of receiving a second general anesthesia within the next 55 months. A total of 819 children with a mean age of 36 months and with nearly 3,300 second primary molars were included. Now only 3% of children who received full coverage of all the second primary molars at the first GA appointment required a second GA appointment. Of children who had four non-covered second primary molars, 19% required a second general anesthesia. And among those children who had unerupted second primary molars at the time of the first general anesthesia, 51% required a second general anesthesia appointment. In the group that required a second general anesthesia appointment, nearly 80% of the second primary molars previously not crowned now required full coverage. The authors concluded that preferential use of full coverage restorations for carious second primary molars for children undergoing general anesthesia will minimize the risk for a repeat general anesthesia. Now, I suspect that many of us can relate these findings to our own clinical experience and the desire we have to use full coverage on most carious teeth in children under general anesthesia. However, we also know that the potential prospect of a challenge by Medicaid or another third-party insurer is very real. Often the claim reviewers or the auditors are not pediatric dentists and they even want to challenge stainless steel crowns on small to moderate sized interproximal caries on primary molars. So we're torn between doing what we think is likely best for the patient and what may raise red flags to a third party insurer. My recommendation is to document as thoroughly as possible the clinical findings under general anesthesia as to the child's caries risk. This includes oral hygiene, the amount of plaque present, the cervical decalcification, and the gingival health, in addition to photos and x-rays in order to help justify the treatment plan of a high caries risk child. To most pediatric dentists, there may be the obvious need for full coverage, but a GP or a hygienist reviewer may need more convincing, so the better the documentation of the caries risk, the better. This article is just another in a long list of articles that speaks to the value of coronal full coverage of primary molars, especially in high caries risk children. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.